Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce polynomial long division, introduce synthetic division, and both of those will help us determine the zeros of a function, introduce the remainder theorem, and introduce repeated division. Just rewinding the clock a little bit, long division, the division that you learned way back in like fourth or fifth grade, or what I like to call is Gazinta math, because, well, I'll tell you about that in a second. But a real quick review of some vocabulary. Just remember with division, our, our vocab, the dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. And we can show that in a multiple ways here. As a fraction, di dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. Or using our long division, the dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. Now keep in mind, for our purposes, the quotient and the divisor will be factors of the dividend. Okay, these two we can multiply together to get us our original dividend. So, so quick review of long division is we ask ourselves, how many times does 18 go into 78. That's when we're doing long division. So the gazinta is goes into how many times does 18 go into 78? Well, 18 goes into 78 four times. Okay, so we multiply back 18 times 4 and we get 72. And what do we do with that 72? We subtract it. We subtract 72 and we get 6 and we bring down our 5 so we've got 65 and we start the process all over again. How many times does 18 go into 65? Well 18 goes into 65 three times and 18 times 3 is 54 so we multiply the 3 times the 18 we subtract the 54 and we get 11 so our remainder of 11 eighteenths. So long division. Well, the process is the same with polynomial long division. Okay, We want to divide 6x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 3 all by x squared plus x minus 1. So we have x squared plus x minus 1 and six x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared plus nine x minus three. So we've got our dividend and our divisor and we'll put our quotient at the top here. Well how do we start this process? We're going to start with the x squared. So we're going to simplify six x to the fourth divided by x squared. So when we simplify that, we get 6x squared. So that's going to be the first part of our quotient. So I'm going to put 6x squared up here. And we're going to take that 6x squared and we're going to multiply back. But we've got to multiply by the entire quantity. So we get 6x squared times x squared, which is 6x to the fourth. That's good. That's what we started with. 6x squared times x is 6x cubed. That's a positive 6x cubed. And 6x squared times negative 1 is negative 6x squared. Well, just like we did in long division, we take this entire quantity and we subtract it. So when we subtract, we have to change all of our signs and add. So the 6x to the 4th drops out. We get negative 7x cubed plus 5x squared. And we can bring down the 9x. And we start that process all over again. We ask ourselves, how many times does x squared go into negative 7x cubed? So negative 7x cubed 
divided by x squared is equal to negative 7x. So then we do that process again. We take the negative 7x, we multiply it by all three terms. We'll get negative 7x cubed minus 7x squared plus 7x. And then we have to subtract that whole quantity. We subtract all of that. So we change all of our signs and we add. The x cubes dropped out. That's good. That's what we want. We get 12x squared plus 2x. Bring your 3 down. And again, we start all over again. What's 12x squared divided by x squared, which is 12? So we have a positive 12 up here. And now we repeat the process. So 12x squared plus 12x minus 12. We subtract everything, and we get negative 10x plus 9, and that's our remainder, plus 9, all over x squared plus x minus 1. So there you go, uh, polynomial long division. Synthetic division. Synthetic division is a, is a quick and handy way of dividing polynomials, but it only works in real specific situations okay so the divisor must be a binomial so we can only have two terms in our divisor so we couldn't do polynomial long division with our previous sample there it's got to be two th two terms and the divisor must be degree one or x to the first power so your divisors are going to be things like uh, x plus four and you know, x minus 7 and that kind of thing. And our coefficient must be 1, so that's why I've got that there. To set up synthetic division, our divisor is going to be the opposite sign of the constant in the divisor. So let's take a look at our sample down here. We have 4x cubed plus 3x minus 8 all over x plus 2. So this is eligible for synthetic division. And instead of working with x, now we're really going to be working with the the coefficients and the and the numbers we're going to set this up we've got negative two as our divisor and our top row we're going to have three rows here we're going to have a top row a middle row and a bottom row and our top row is made up of coefficients of the terms in the dividend and we're going to write those make sure those are in decreasing degree from left to right if we're missing a term like here we don't have an x squared we'll have to use zero as a placeholder. So my top row, I call that the coefficient row, and our coefficients are four, zero, because that's gonna replace our x squared, three, and our constant negative eight. So that's our coefficient row. And the middle row is that is gonna be our product row, and that is a product, call that the product row, because that's the result of multiplication, and that's gonna be where we do some of our work. So right now we're not going to have anything in that row. That's going to be blank right now. And then the bottom row, I call that the sum row because that's going to be the result of addition. And actually the sum row, that's going to be where our answer is. That's going to be our quotient. To start the synthetic division process, we have to prime our pump. So what we'll always do is we'll take that leading coefficient and we'll bring that down to our sum row. Now we start our process we multiply. So we take our negative 2 and we multiply by 4. So and since we're multiplying, we'll put that in our product row. So negative 2 times 4, we're going to put that below the next term, negative 8. And then we add down. 0 plus negative 8 is negative 8. And then we repeat the process. We're going to multiply again, negative 2 times negative 8 we get positive 16, we add those two together, and we get 19. Negative 2 times 19 is negative 38, and we add these down, we get negative 46. So our answers here, this is our remainder, our constant, our x to the first, and our x to the second. So our answer is 4x squared 
minus 8x plus 19 minus 46 over x plus 2 is our remainder. Now the remainder is kind of cool in synthetic division because the remainder and our divisor tell us a point on the graph of our polynomial function. So all that says down there uh, is that what I've written above here. So negative 2, negative 46 is a point on this particular graph. So we can factor polynomials by doing division multiple times or using repeated division. We're asked here to find the remaining factors of 2x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 4x squared minus 27x minus 18. We've got factors x minus 2 and x plus 3. Those are two of the factors already. Okay, We just want to find the remaining factors. Well, these divisors are synthetic division eligible, so we are going to use synthetic division here. And it's going to help us out. So using synthetic division with a factor of x minus 2, so then we're going to use positive 2, so there's our positive 2. We grab all our coefficients, 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, and negative 18. Put those in our coefficient row. Then we take our 2 and we bring it down and we prime the pump and we multiply. 2 times 2 is 4, 7 plus 4 is 11. 2 times 11 is 22, negative 4 plus 22 is 18, 2 times 18 is 36, negative 27 plus 36 is 9, 2 times 9 is 18, and we get a I incorrectly label the product zero. in the sum row so here. That means that this worked out evenly, that's great, so this is our new constant, that's our x to the first x to the second, x cubed. So those are the coefficients. Now since that went in evenly, we can use those coefficients, we can bring them down, and we can divide again. And now we use our other factor, x plus 3, so our divisor is negative 3. We've got our coefficients from the problem above, 2, 11, 18, and 9 and those go in our coefficient row. We've got our sum row and our product row. I flipped the sum row and product row again. So we'll prime our pump, we'll bring our two down, and then multiply. Negative three times two is negative six. We get a sum of five. I mixed up my, my rows here, didn't I? I'll fix that. The middle row is our product row, the bottom row is our sum row. So we multiply, three, negative 3 times 2, we get negative 6, we add down. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and we add down. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, we add down. So that is also a factor. And we get 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Those two factors result in this 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 is our quotient. Fortunately for us, our quotient is still factorable. We can factor that to 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. So our factorization, x minus 2 times x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 1, which means the zeros of our function are x equals 2, x equals negative 3, x equals negative 3 halves, and x equals negative 1. So there is a introduction to synthetic division, polynomial division, using repeated division, and that is a, some tools to help you find the zeros in polynomial functions. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.